Hi everybody. Uh, I'm going uh, to introduce to you uh, the basic circuit laws and uh, the object of this, of this uh, topic is um, to calculate voltage, current and power at each elements of the circuits. Of course we're talking about simple circuits. So we're going to start with uh, explaining the meaning of resistors first and then uh, Ohm's law to find the relationship between the voltage and current across the resistor and then we'll go to series and parallel resistor and then in the end we're going to do the analysis using Kirchhoff current law and Kirchhoff voltage law so let's start first the resistance I introduced to you in the first lab session but just let me get quickly over the definition of resistor as we see that the resistance of a material it means some kind of restriction to the electrons to flow in a conductor limiting the current of the electrons it means limiting the value of the current and to calculate the resistance of any conductive material in any wire it depends on the three things number one it depends on the length every time the length of the wire is bigger the resistance is, get, is getting higher because I mean the electrons has to go through all this long way so the resistance is really big when it's wide the wire is, is long that's why the resistance is proportion uh, directly proportional to the length of a wire what about the cross-section area of the wire every time the cross section of area the cross section area of the wire is small the resistance is high why because it will be very hard for electrons to go through it so the resistance of a wire is inversely proportional to the cross section area what does it mean it means that if the cross section area is big the resistance is small if the cross section area is small the resistance is big and the third factor that affect the value of the resistance is the resistivity of the material we we'll, we'll call it a rho what is the resistivity of the material it depends on the material type not all conductors or not all metal conduct in the same way some they are classified as excellent conductive material some they are less they are average so this value it depends on the uh, material itself so the resistivity if the resistivity is high of the material the ore resistance will be uh, high the opposite uh, of the resistivity we call it conductivity sigma so sigma is equal one over rho they are the opposite of each other so this formula is used to calculate the resistance of any conductor okay uh, of course I mean uh, there are different shapes types of resistor this for example fixed resistors I mean each one has specific value you have another thing called variable resistors I mean it has like a knob here you can turn it anti-clockwise direction or clockwise direction to increase or decrease the value of the total resistance and we're going to um, explain that more uh, especially in the lab when we use it another important thing I mean just the resistance has application in variety of uh, uh, variety of application like thermistor the resistance can be used in some kind of um, uh, sensor that sends the temperature that's called thermistor okay uh, the resistance of the semiconductor material okay another thing photoconductive cell this I mean inside like I mean kind of photoconductive material that when the light hit it the resistance value variable and there are a lot of application in that you can you can call this like I mean light sensor and usually uh, this sensor uh, if the light on this material the resistance get low and in in dark the resistance get high of course with variable uh, or quantity is not the same thing 
okay it's varying according to the intensity of light that's a nice sensor a lot, a lot of application in many projects okay uh, how can you find the value of resistance you can find the value of resistor by two methods you use something called ohmmeter in the lab or just look at the color you'll find here that the resistance has one two three four bands of colors the first one or the first digit we we'll call it b1 the first the second one we we'll call it b2 the third one b3 and it's special when you see the number or equivalent number for b3 you say 10 power b3 and the last one it's the percent tolerance which is b4 let's just explain it by one example look at this resist the first band or the first digit the color is red when you look at the table up here red is equal to so this number is equal to let's just change the color to make it clear for you that's two the second second band the color is uh, violet which is uh, seven so that will be seven the third one we agree that will be the 10 power whatever the number here this color is orange so three so it's leave the last one till we finish the first three bands 27 times 10 power 3 that will be 27 time 10 power 3 the last one is a percent tolerance and we have two values 10 percent or 5 percent plus or minus it depends if it's silver or gold don't have other choice this one is silver so it will be plus or minus 10 percent so i'll write here plus or minus 10 percent what does it mean plus or minus 10 percent it means that the value of this resistance is two seven zero zero twenty seven thousand ohm but it's not exactly the same you may add or subtract ten percent of the value itself so ten percent of twenty seven thousand that would be how much okay it's like multiplying that by point one so it's like two thousand seven hundred so it may be twenty seven thousand plus 2700 or minus 2700 that's the meaning of it okay we'll finish with the resistor now we'll start for the first basic ohms law and ohms law is very simple how we do it in the lab you get the resistor and you connect it to the uh, power supply voltage power supply and you uh, that's variable power supply that's in the lab you can change the value of the voltage you connect in parallel the voltmeter and you connect in series the ammeter so this one will uh, across the voltage power supply is going to measure the voltage and the one in series here is going to measure the current in the circuit that will pass here that's i we start to change the voltage from 10 voltage up to 100 voltage and then we measure the current so we we record the result in this table so when it was 10 voltage it was one ampere and every time i'm increasing the voltage to 20 30 the current is increasing to two three and so on till i reach the end 100 voltage 10 ampere i sketched the relationship in a way that the voltage here on the x-axis and the current on the y-axis and i will check the straight line now and see what is the relationship that you deduce it well I mean when you look here when you have one ampere you got 10 voltage when you two ampere 20 volts when three ampere 30 volts so always I mean the voltage is equal some kind of constant multiply the current R we call this one R the resistor so when you have 10 ohm if you have one ampere you will have 10 volts two ampere 20 volts and so on so it's a constant slope of this relationship uh, there is another way that you can write that you can say is i is equal b over r it will be so very hard for the electrons same to thing. go through it so the voltage so on the, the resistance is very important to show is inversely proportional for example if you have an area, area and the current going in this direction that if that the cross section and area is big 
you got to the resistance is small this mutation. if the so cross section R area is, equal is small for example, the resistance is big and R is equal to and ohm. so the, the third factor that affect the value of the resistance is the resistivity of the material we, we call it a row what is the resistivity of the material it depends on the material type not all conductors or not all metal conduct in the same way some they are classified as excellent conductive material some they are less they are average so this value it depends on the uh, material itself so the resistivity if the resistivity is high of the material the ore resistance will be uh, high the opposite uh, of the resistivity we call it conductivity sigma so sigma is equal one over rho they are the opposite of each other so this formula is used to calculate the resistance of any conductor okay uh, of course i mean uh, there are different shapes types of resistor this for example fixed resistors i mean each one has specific value you have another thing called variable resistors i mean it has like a knob here you can turn it anti-clockwise direction or clockwise direction to increase or decrease the value of the total resistance and we're going to um, explain that more uh, especially in the lab when we use it another important thing i mean just the resistance has application in variety of uh, a variety of application like thermistor the resistance can be used in some kind of um, uh, sensor that sends the temperature that's called thermistor okay uh, the resistance of the semiconductor material okay another thing photoconductive cell this i mean inside like i mean kind of photoconductive material that when the light hit it the resistance value variable and there are a lot of application in that you can you can call this like i mean light sensor and usually uh, this sensor uh, if the light on this material the resistance get low and in in dark the resistance get high of course with variable uh, or, uh, quantity is not the same thing okay it's varying according to the intensity of light that's a nice sensor a lot, a lot of application in many projects okay uh, how can you find the value of resistance you can find the value of resistor by two methods you use something called ohmmeter in the lab or just look at the color you'll find here that the resistance has one two three four bands of colors the first one or the first digit we call it b1 the first the second one we call it b2 the third one b3 and it's special when you see the number or the equivalent number for b3 you say 10 power b3 and the last one it's the percent tolerance which is b4 let's just explain it by one example look at this resistor the first band or the first digit the color is red when you look at the table up here red is equal to so this number is equal to let's just change the color to make it clear for you that's two the second second band the color is uh, violet which is um, seven so that will be seven the third one we agree that will be the 10 power whatever the number here this color is orange so three so it's leave the last one till we finish the first three bands 27 times 10 bar 3 that will be 27 times 10 bar 3 the last one is a percent tolerance and we have two values 10 percent or 5 percent plus or minus it depends if it's silver or gold don't have other choice this one is silver so it will be plus or minus 10 percent so i'll write here plus or minus 10 percent what does it mean plus or minus 10 percent it means that the value of this resistance is 
2700 ohm but it's not exactly the same you may add or subtract 10 percent of the value itself so 10 percent of 27,000 that would be how much okay it's like multiplying that by 0.1 so it's like 2700 so it may be 27,000 plus 2700 or minus 2700 that's the meaning of it okay we'll finish with the resistor now we'll start for the first basic ohms law and ohms law is very simple how we do it in the lab you get the resistance and you connect it to the uh, power supply voltage power supply and you uh, that's variable power supply that's in the lab you can change the value of the voltage you connect in parallel the voltmeter and you connect in series the ammeter so this one will uh, across the voltage power supply is going to measure the voltage and the one in series here is going to measure the current in the circuit that will pass here that's i we start to change the voltage from 10 voltage up to 100 voltage and then we measure the current so we'll, we record the result in this table so when it was 10 voltage it was one ampere and every time i'm increasing the voltage to 20 30 the current is increasing to 2 3 and so on till i reach the end 100 voltage 10 ampere i sketched the relationship in a way that the voltage here on the x-axis and the current on the y-axis and i will check the straight line now and see what is the relationship that you deduce it well i mean when you look here when you have one ampere you got 10 voltage when you two ampere 20 volts when you three ampere 30 volts so always i mean the voltage is equal some kind of constant multiplied the current r we call this one r the resistor so when you have 10 ohm if you have one ampere you will have 10 volts two ampere 20 volts and so on so it's a constant slope of this relationship uh, there is another way that you can write that you can say is i is equal b over r so both are the same thing so the voltage on the but i mean it's very important to show this notation uh, for example if you have r here and the current going in this direction that will be a positive and negative voltage across this one you got to understand this notation so i is equal for example to ampere and r is equal to an ohm so the voltage is equal to 20 volt in this way in this polarity this direction of current when the current goes inside the resistor it will make this positive and negative because the current move from the positive to the negative from high voltage to low voltage okay that's ohm's law and we have two special cases the two special cases that if the circuit is open what does it mean circuit is open i mean uh, no wire connected between the two terminals here it, what does it mean it means r is equal infinity it's big the resistance is huge i mean it's not connected in this way the current will be equal zero how we got this because i mean we know that the current is equal v over r so whatever the value let's we have voltage 12 voltage and r is equal infinity anything divided by infinity is equal zero so the current is equal zero so when the current is equal zero and it means that's open circuit the opposite a short circuit it means that you connect the terminals of a circuit with a wire thick wire doesn't have resistance means r is equal zero doesn't have any resistance it's thick does not prevent any electron to move through it so now i mean when you look at the voltage you see the voltage across here is equal r times i okay so i whatever the value but r is equal zero zero multiplies by any value of the current the voltage will be equal zero so when voltage equals zero in any circuit it means short circuit why we say v equal zero it means the voltage at this point equal at the voltage at this point because it's just connected by a wire so the difference of the voltage is equal zero short circuit is it a dangerous situation yes it is very dangerous why because let's say that you have a battery and this is 12 voltage and you put resistance here if you have 10 ohm the current is easy to calculate it using uh, um, ohm's law so you have the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance is equal 1.2 ampere what about if you make short circuit 
means you connect by a wire the current will not go uh, through the resistance why it will choose the easy the easy path it will go from here and going through this wire why it go there it's 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 hard to go through it's easier here so the current will go there now we'll ask yourself what is the resistance of this wire is equal zero so what's the current that's going through this one i equal 12 volt over zero ohm it will be infinity current the current will be increase increase increasing it will be infinity huge amount of number that's why it's better to put fuse here if the current exceeds certain limit it will disconnect the circuit great how you calculate the power there are two ways the first fundamental law v is equal i mean power is equal volts time current that's what you know but you know that v is equal ri from ohm's law so you can put the voltage here v times i so you put ri so what you get ri square so that's a second formula for the power so the power is equal vi or ri square another way you look at it you leave v as it is and i you know i is equal v over r so replace i by v over r so v time v is equal v square divided by r that's another thing so you got three formula b equal v times i or r i square or v square over r that's the three formula for the power across any resistor. doing this ohm's law i mean it's a very fundamental law that you are going to use in many electric circuits that's a very simple one we're going to use to solve the simple one now and i'll give you some a little bit advanced to try it before you come to the lecture and then you can ask me about it you want to find the current you have to know what's the voltage the voltage 30 volts and will be applied to the resistance 5 kilo ohm so the current i will be equal v over r and that will be equal 30 volt divided by 5 kilo ohm you have to be careful here when you divide by kilo ohm the unit will not be ampere will be milliampere 30 over 5 will be equal 6 so the value is equal 6 milliampere or you can write 0 0.006 ampere that's the value of the current another thing i mean just you want to calculate the power the power is equal many things v i i will do one and you can check the other um, two formula v i the voltage is equal to 30 voltage very important to put in it 6 milliampere that the current when you multiply 30 times 6 will be 180 milliwatt in watt you divided by a thousand okay 0.18 watt so be careful about that okay so that's the first uh, example it was simple now we'll just will go to define some terminology are going to use in electric circuits because now we're going to be involved a little bit the first definition an electric network electric network is a collection of elements through which current flows collection of elements what does it mean collection of elements mean you connect a resistor with power with power supply with inductors you connect them in different way in a way that the current goes we call this electric network how it look like it look there are many ways to look like and we're going to see it in the future but this is i mean the definition of the network okay and the important definition i'd like you to know the node the node it's the junction where many elements are connected together many branches connected in one junction we we'll call it knot the branch it's a wire and has kind of um, component elements like here I mean that's I mean wire has component a wire has resistance wire has battery wire has current source and uh, uh, resistance we we'll call this branch 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 all name okay now we'll go to something here important I mean uh, the loop loop it's a cl any close path uh, it will make a loop like this one is closed that's a loop this one closed it's a loop and this one outside is closed it's a loop okay that's the definition for loop mesh mesh is sometimes I mean 
people are confusing between mesh and loop because mesh it's a special case mesh it is closed path away like that but does not contain any closed pathway inside what does it mean this is mesh loop and loop too yes this is mesh and loop yes what about that this is not a mesh this is a loop only why it's the only loop only not a mesh because you cannot say that the, this is mesh because mesh does not have inside it except only one clause but this one has more than one so you can call it mesh you call it loop okay the ground I explained that in the uh, uh, lab and I'd like to review it uh, there is something they connect to just say like inside the car you know um, you, you connect you found the connect in the negative to the body so it will uh, make everybody save when touch the the body of the car the earth thing when you put this I mean um, rod or metal part inside the soil and uh, you connect it to the wire and you connect to the earth uh, terminal inside the building signal grounding uh, it look like that that when you have electronic and digital signal and you want to get like a common point for them common ground for them we use this simple and sometimes I mean um, many people they are uh, choosing this or that together and of course you will understand it more when we start to sketch electric circuit okay uh, I, I give you a list of symbols that you're going to use uh, through the course so when uh, you see any schematic diagram you just go back to the chart to know what this element represents this is like a battery resistant and lamp like on it's, it's very simple nothing in it now we'll we'll just reach now a very important point Kirchhoff's law Kirchhoff's laws has two forms there is a Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law let's look for the first one the first one it will tell you that the total or the sum of the current in any node is equal to zero I'd like it to write it in a different way okay uh, there is different way to state the Kirchhoff current law you can say that uh, the total current uh, input is equal to the total output current so in this case what is the input what do you mean input 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 in the node you have I1 input the node I3 I4 so I'll say I1 plus I3 plus I4 that's the input the output you have I2 and I5 I2 and I5 so this is one way to to do um, a Kirchhoff current law another way uh, you can express will say that anything input will give it positive sign and anything output negative sign so you can write this one I1 plus I3 plus I4 minus I2 minus I5 equals 0 that's why if you read the textbook it will tell you like the sum of the current okay uh, connected to the node is equal to 0 okay now the Kirchhoff voltage law it states that the sum of the voltage in loop in any loop is equal to zero or any emission is equal to zero so this one the Kirchhoff current law related to the knot and the Kirchhoff voltage law related to the loop okay so when you want to apply this Kirchhoff current law you look for the knot you want to apply Kirchhoff voltage law look for the loop now let's go for the Kirchhoff voltage law some people they are confused about Kirchhoff voltage law but just let me make it simple for you I will start by simple thing let's say that you have a battery and this this is equal to 12 voltage and then you connect it to another battery 12 voltage and then you put voltmeter to measure the voltage are you gonna get 0 or 24 to make it simple you see this is a battery a positive and negative 
and then you put it like that positive and negative and then the positive and negative so you, you put it together like that so you are increasing the voltage decreasing the voltage of course you are increasing the voltage so the total voltage will be equal to 12 plus 12 is equal to 24 voltage so when you are connecting the positive to the negative or negative to the positive means in series you are increasing the voltage but on the other hand if you have 12 voltage and then you flip the positive to the positive like that let's say that is 9 voltage okay so what is the voltage here if you put the voltmeter here you will find what is the measurement the measurement will be 12 minus 9 12 minus 9 3 voltage so when you connected the positive to the positive or negative with negative you are decreasing the voltage you are subtracting so the rule is the voltage add when you connect positive to negative now I will just let you give you just a small exercise like that I will say this is V1 V2 V3 V4 to make it clear positive negative negative positive positive negative negative positive to do any Kirchhoff current law you got to use reference what they mean use reference like say I'm going to take this as a reference this is my reference and then you start to move in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise just move in one direction I, I, I will just move in this direction as you see okay now this is the positive when you go for V to the positive connected to negative or positive to negative so you are adding or subtracting adding but first write V1 now when you write V2 are you going to plus or minus since the positive connect to the negative in the like in this case connected to the opposite one so you are adding go for the third one when you go it's your reference always you it you look for the positive and then just you move now we go to this one connected to the positive the same so you subtracting minus v3 move till you go to v4 negative positive you are adding that's the this means that that's the Kirchhoff voltage law simply so you choose the reference you start to move in one direction don't change and you look for the first polarity you meet for each voltage why I make it like that as a battery so you will just understand it but you will go back here to this one and now apply it I will say this is my reference okay that's V1 I'll write V1 then I see the positive positive will be minus V2 positive positive minus V3 positive negative plus V4 equals 0 of course you can arrange them like say V1 plus V4 equal v2 plus v3 you can you can you can say that okay so they're all connected together in series like a positive or negative series together and all the other will be on the other side there is one make voltage rise there is one make voltage drop so that's i mean if you put this in your mind you will never make any mistakes just i have one uh, remark or one comment you may find in some textbook they write v1 minus okay if you take this minus you change everything you can say if you take the minus v1 so be a minus v2 plus v3 minus v4 equals zero because some people they will say the reference when you have the positive here in the top it will be a minus okay okay so what i'm saying is it doesn't matter what you're going to choose but it's very important once you choose the reference 
you choose the sign of it it's very important to follow when you follow you see the connection of this polarity to the first one you are going to meet is it the same or the opposite this is the whole issue so summarize what we said about uh, Kirchhoff laws we have two Kirchhoff current law Kirchhoff watch law one applied for the node one applied for the loop for the knot the sum of the current at any knot is equal zero kvl the sum of the voltage in any loop closed loop is equal zero simple okay all right <clears throat>